Hey everybody, welcome back to the third episode in this uh, series of videos where we show you how to create a walkthrough controller or sign-up flow for your application using Swift and using the PaaS platform. So, so far, um, since last time I saw you guys, we created a walkthrough controller where a user is presented with a page-like control where you can explain which app's about and we took it further and we hooked up a sign-up page as well as a login page. Now, this video is going to explain how to tie everything up together into one package where we're going to be using the PaaS platform, which is like a back-end database services type um, platform uh, where we're going to manage our users. So we're going to hook up the sign-up feature. We're going to show you that it, we can then save a user to a database. Then we're going to hook up a logout feature and then ultimately we're going to hook up the login feature. And by the end of the video, you should have a working application where a user can launch the application. If he's not signed in yet, we show him the walkthrough um, controller. Then he has the option to sign up or log in. And then we can save the user's details in the database and log in back in or whatever you want to do with it. So let's get straight to it now. All right. So... Previously, um, we just created the sign-up screen and the login screen. We didn't do any controllers the last time, um, but this video isn't really about, again, how to design your login page or sign-up page. They're very straightforward. So I'm just going to give you a chance just to kind of catch up now um, and do this yourself in the meantime. So what I've done is that I've added a couple of controllers to the sign-up page, a name text field, an email text field, a password text field, and a sign-up button. This should be sign up. I'll, we can change it later. And then two labels just to say welcome and please come to use our services. Then for the login page, I've added another label, an email text field, and a password text field, and a login button, and an additional look our password button. All right, so if you haven't done this yet, you're not this far, just pause the videos, hook up your um, do all the alignments and the order size and constraints, etc., until you get something that looks very much like this and then come back to us. Cool, so I'm assuming you've done that now. So the next thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna implement the pause platform into our project. Now, I already have another video about how to implement pause into your project. You can click that link in the top right hand corner of this video. So I'm gonna do it, I've already done it in this project now on my side, quickly walk you through the steps to do it. But if you get stuck, watch the other video and I'm gonna assume that you've done this now. So if you do get stuck, just watch the other video. Um, but in a nutshell, this is what we're gonna do. First of all, we're gonna need you to create a new pause account. Once you created a pause account, um, you create a new application. So once you create an application, I call it my app for walkthrough demo, and it tells me that my app has been successfully created and to go on the quick start guide tour. All right, so once you click on the quick start guide tour, it'll take you through the process of selecting a product. So you want to go data, you want to go mobile, you want to go iOS, you want to go Objective-C, even though we're doing Swift, this is the closest thing to work with, um, and into an existing project. It's going to tell you to download the SDK, so click on that in the meantime. It's also going to ask you to, once it's downloaded, copy the PaaS framework into your project, and then add the dependencies and all the additional frameworks that the PaaS platform requires. So, I've done that already. Let me just show you now. So I've imported the pause framework over here and I've already done and added the extra frameworks that they require. What you also need to do is then create a bridging header file because the pause framework and all of the frameworks are an Objective-C code so you need another bridging file. Watch the video if you don't know how to do that. It's very easy to do. In the bridging file, we've added or imported the pause framework files into our project. Okay, and then lastly, you need to add the pause code into your app dedicate file just to kind of like initialize it into your application. So this is the Swift code. Again, all these instructions are on the other video, but this is the Swift code that you use in your Swift project to initialize pause into your application. All right, so once we've done that, and I'm assuming that you've done, you've up to this point right now, we're going to start hooking things up. So now that you've set up pause into your project, everything's hooked up and you have all the frameworks, etc., 
what we're going to do now is go to our main view controller page. And now this, this main view controller page is the page where the user lands when he opens the application for the first time. So remember this is where we have the show walkthrough button and you press the button to go to the walkthrough. We're not going to have a button anymore. We're going to have a conditional logic to check to see whether there is a user signed in. If there's no signed in user, we're going to push them through to the walkthrough page. If there is a signed in user, then we don't show the walkthrough page. Okay, so what we want to do then to add the logic, we need to work in the view did appear method. So I don't see my view did appear method in currently, so let's just type view did appear, and you'll see that the autocomplete shows that method already. So just press enter. Now what we want to do is that we want to see whether a user is currently signed in. Now the parse framework has a user object already built into it. A lot of the heavy work's been done for you. So what you're going to do, and just follow along here, is basically we're going to say pf user, pf being the parse framework user, if there is a current user, So basically, there would be a current user if the user is signed in via the PARS framework, or whether the PARS framework identifies a signed in user. If this user is not equal to null, then we can say that user is signed in, right? Because the object is not null. On the other hand, if the object is null, then we're going to assume that user is nil, show walkthrough. So there's no one signed in. And I forgot to add the, the if. Okay, so if, if current user is not equal to nil, then user signed in, we're happy, else user is nil, show walkthrough. So now we're going to call the show walkthrough button pressed. And that's gonna call the action that would have happened if the person pressed the show walkthrough button. We're just gonna piggyback on the same function, um, but you can write your own function if you, if you wanna use something more unique. All right, so let's test this out. Let's launch the application. All right, there you go. So if we look into our console, we see that user is null, show walkthrough, and then the function show walkthrough button is pressed. Now, we have a skip button here, which we're gonna take away um, later on, but if we now try and go back to the view controller, it's gonna keep on pushing us back because it's keep on doing on the view did appear method of this or kind of flow, it's gonna keep on checking for the user that if he signed in or not, and it's gonna keep on presenting the, the walkthrough if he's not signed in. So now we're in a position where we have to do something now. We have to sign in or log in. So we're gonna do that right now. So let's now go to our storyboard. Let's go to our system editor just so we can work on two files at the same time. Let's go to our sign up view controller scene. Cool. And let's make sure that we're working on the sign up view controller file as well. It's sometimes tricky to find the file. Oh, I'll get to it. Uh, here we go, sign up view controller. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to now hook up the fields and the buttons to the file here. So we're going to right click and drag the name text field as a normal outlet. Let's give it some space. We're going to add the email text field as an outlet. And I don't know why Xcode does that. It does it quite a lot. Some bugginess I'm assuming. Okay, let's try and get our Okay. We now want to add the password outlets, password text field. All right, now 
Xcode does this. Um, sometimes if you see this error message that cannot insert new outlet connection, what generally is the problem is that you need to clean your um, your build. So I find the Xcode to be quite buggy at the moment, and things like this happen. But I just clean it, and it should solve the problem. Pass your text field. There you go. All right. Let's change this to say sign up as you wanted to. Cool. Now we want to add the sign up button. So we just right click and drag and sign up button pressed. And remember, this is an action and we don't need to pass in any arguments. Connect. And again, as we like to do, we want to add a print line statement just saying that the sign up button has been pressed and are calling the function. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to add the logic now um, on the sign up button. All right, so now we want to add the, the logic behind the sign up button. So let's now go and leave assistant editor. Let's go to our sign up view controller. We're done with the storyboard for now. So I'm going to actually add in the logic. I've prepared the code for you already. I'm just going to paste it into it. And I'm just going to walk you through. It's, it looks like a lot of code, but a lot of it's just kind of like validating whether the fields are, uh, whether they're not empty or not. OK, so I'm pasting the code in here. And don't worry, I'm going to make this code available to use. OK, so what's happening here? So sign up button is going to get pressed. OK, I've gone ahead and I've, I've done some validation checking to see if name field, if name text field is not equal to an empty string, if email field is not equal to an empty string, and parser field is not equal to an empty string, then we're going to do the sign up. All right. Else, if any of these are are empty, then I'm going to show an alert just to say that, you know, for instance, no password was provided. Show alert saying please enter a password. Try again, and then you can handle add a button and handle any logic for that. So I've added one alert here for you, and then what you can do is you can just copy this alert and just put it into these other ones over here. You know, I like just to make it a little bit more robust, um, you know, a little bit more user-friendly if the user doesn't provide a password or an email or a name and you want to capture all that information. You know, you definitely want to capture the email and the password because in pause, we're going to use that as our username and password field, actually our login credentials, so that's very important. Um, but otherwise, yeah, the name is optional, but we're going to capture that anyways right now. So what we're mainly focused about is this stuff over here, this piece of code right over here. This is where we actually save the user. So you'll see now that we create a new variable of user. He's a PF user, and as we mentioned before, this is our user objects in the pause framework. So pause. It has a couple of already kind of built-in um, parameters or properties to the user. For instance, password, username, and email. These are things which you can directly access from the user um, object. And then, but you can still add and associate additional um, properties to the user. And we do that by just putting into square brackets and the name of the property. So for instance, Name isn't a standard property of the user object. So you're going to create one called name and we're going to make it the text of the name text field. We're going to associate the password of the user with whatever is in the password text field. The username, we, remember what I said is that we're going to use the email text field as the username and then we're going to capture the email which will also be the email text field. So the reason why we're using email twice here for the login screen, I don't want to use usernames and um, like literally like their name or some weird random string of characters as a login credential. Uh, I want to make it easier and just use an email because the email is unique enough. So pause uses the username and email as login credentials. I'm going to pass, sorry, the username and the password as login credentials. So I'm going to pass in the email to both the username as well as the email property, and then as far as sign up goes, we're just going to ask for the password and 
their email, which will be our username in our database. Okay, so that's why you see it's duplicated here. It's purely for the reason that I want to use the email text field or the email string as the username to access their accounts. That's why. So once we have those four pieces of information and we assign them to the user objects, we then call upon the user dot sign up and background at block. Now this is going to call this and it's going to start saving the user into our database. Then there's a if else condition. If the error is equal to null, so if there are no errors or the error is empty, then everything was successful. We're going to print line saying user was saved successfully, and then we're going to attempt to dismiss the sign up view controller. Because obviously once you sign up and everything was successful, you want to dismiss the view controller. Else, if there was an error, show the error. Uh, I'm just showing an alert here saying that there's something, you know, there was a problem saving the account. Try again, whatever. So and again, the, the sign up back button press is the same function or the same delegate we're using over here. So it dismisses the sign up view controller. So that is our sign up process. It's pretty straightforward. So now we can test that by launching the application. Okay. Go to our uh, walkthrough view controller. Click on sign up. And now we're going to enter our name willy at wonka.com and our password all right so this is what we didn't do our password now it's a plain text field what we want to do is actually make that a password field so you can do that by going back to the storyboard clicking on the password text field and on the properties we can actually make Sorry, secure text entry, that's what we need. So be a this will be a secure text entry field. While we're here, we can select the email text field and we can make the keyboard type for this to be the email address keyboard. So all the buttons and characters will be easily accessible when they're using this field. So let's now run this application again. Okay, sign up, Simon Willie at Wonka dot candy password, our super secret password. All right, sign up. So now you'll see that first of all, our sign up view controller was dismissed, which is a good thing, and because it means that everything was successful, we can look into our console here. We can see that the user was saved successfully with the email Willy Wonka name sign and username at WillyWonka.candy and the sign of view controller was then dismissed. Okay, so now that was pretty, pretty great. If we now go back to our pause database now, so once you sign into pause and you're using the application, click on the core option in the menu. This will show you your core data. And you'll see now that we have one user in our user class, and then you go username Woody at Wonka.candy. The password is hidden by default. You do not know what it is. Pause doesn't know what it is, it's encrypted. So don't worry if your users are concerned. You can assure them that their details or their passwords are, are safe from you or from anybody else using your application or your database. Then our emails Woody at Wonka.candy. Our name is Simon. The day was created updated, etc. So we created our first user. That's pretty awesome. All right, so now let's test this out. So if we launch the application again, so let's just make sure it's closed. Now we've quit the application. We're going to launch it again. And there you go. So now we're not showing the walkthrough and we have in the console user assigned in. So that means that Pause has recognized that we have a user cached um, in, the, in, our, in our project and everything is awesome. So what we can do now is hook up the logout button and actually let's just change this user status to also show us the status of the currently logged in user. So let's just close this. All right. Let's hide the walkthrough button. Let's open up the assistant editor. 
Okay. Let's go to our view controller file. All right. So let's make an outlet for the user status because I'm use I'm gonna use the user status label just to kind of show me who's logged in. So an outlet for user status. All right, we need to clean again. It's quite frustrating. User status label. Okay, this is a, a bug with Xcode right now. Um, it's not allowing me to create a new outlet, which is incredibly frustrating, but let's just hope that the logout button will be a little bit better. Logout button pressed. Is that what we mostly care about? Okay, so we just need to clean and build our project again and that solved that issue. So to add the user status label again. All right, cool. All right, so let's now go to our user is signed in condition. Okay, so if user is signed in, we want to then get the name, so var name. I'll just say email address for now. Our email is equal to the pf user dot current user dot email. So remember, email is a default property to the user object. So we can easily grab that from the signed in user. Then we want to say the user status label dot text is equal to user is signed in. new line and then we can just say email so we can see the email of the currently signed in user that's what we want to see all right so now for the logout now the logout is pretty easy um, it's a very quick line of code so what you want to do is paste in the following code all right so we're going to print line logging user out call the pfuser.logout function and then basically we're assigning a variable current user to equal the PF user current user, which is going to be null anyways. All right. So the logout um, code I got you as well as the signing code, it's all available in the pause documentation. You just got to hunt around for a bit, but this is where this is where I'm getting it from. You can follow their documentation too if you'd like to. Okay, so now we have a logout and we have a sign in. So now let's launch the application again and see what happens. Okay, so we can see that user is signed in and the user is willy at wonka.candy, the current email address of the signed in user. Let's tap on the logout. And it says that logging user out, users logged out. If we had to relaunch the application, now you can add a condition to reshow the walkthrough now, which maybe might not be such a bad idea. We launch the application again and we're seeing the walk-in screen again and because there's no user currently logged in. So now we want to actually log the user in now with the current credentials we have. So let's now close the, the, the application. Let's also, after logging out, let's call the show walkthrough button post again. So logout button's pressed, we log the user out, we then show the walkthrough. So it kind of continues the cycle again. So now we want to go to our login view controller. Okay, we want to open up this as an editor. Go to the storyboard. And we need to find the login. Okay, cool. Now what we want to do is we want to add two outlets. email text field. Again, we're getting this problem and let's just try and 
15 and build. I'm not sure what the problem is with Xcode, why it does this. Um, if you guys know of any reason maybe, uh, please let me know, otherwise I'm just going to live through it for now. So let's add the email outlet again, email text field. password, text field, and the login button. Login button pressed. And again, it's an action. Never forget to put buttons to be actions. Connect. And our habits of adding a print line statement with every function that can and will be called. Okay, so we can now get rid of this as an editor and go to our code here. All right, I want to copy and paste the login code again, and I'll walk you through it. Okay, so the concept here is very similar to the sign up page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that the email text field is not equal to an empty string, as well as the parser text field not equal to an empty string. So we make sure that both of these fields actually have information or strings within them. If they don't, we can show alerts, alerting the user, please enter valid password, or please enter valid email, or both, etc. But what we want is this piece of code over here. And this piece of code is going to assign a new email variable called email, which will be the text from the email text field, a password variable using the text from the password text field. We're then going to call on the pfuser.login with username in background, pass in the email, and pass in the password. So this is the email variable, which is going to be used as the username for the user we want to log in with. Remember, because you're using the email as the username of the user property or the user class and the password. Then we're going to call in, it's going to do its magic. And it's going to then, if it's if user is not equal to nil after the login, so there is a user, it's not nil, then we're going to say login success, attempting to close login screen. We're going to attempt to dismiss the login view controller. Else we're going to show an error saying that, you know, error logging in, no email and password credentials were matched. Whatever the reason was, you can elaborate if you want to. So let's run this now and let's see what happens. Okay, application launches. There's no user, so it took us to the walkthrough screen. We want to go to the login page. Let's type in our willy at wonka.candy email address and our password. We didn't make this, we didn't mask this field for this screen, but it's fine. We go log in. And there you go, login success attempting to close login screen. Now if we just close the walkthrough, we can see that users signed in willy at wonka.candy. And that is it, we can then log out the user, takes us back to the walkthrough screen. We can again sign in again. And there you have it, you have a working project application which on launch checks to see whether a user is currently signed in. If the user is not signed in, we show him a nice walkthrough where you can show pictures and explain what the application is about. Give the user an option to either sign up for a new account or if he has an account, you can log in with his account. And you have a back-end service platform that's managing all your user accounts for you. So I hope you learned something from this. Again, I'm sorry if it seemed a little bit rushed, but it was probably about an hour and a half worth of videos just to show you the power of pause and how to create a sign-up flow for your application. The reason why I kept it a little bit bare bones, I didn't do anything fancy, was because I wanted to show you and give you the skill to create a flow, not necessarily 
you know, how to make it fancy. You know, I, I'm sure you guys have got creative minds out there and you can, you know, use what you've learned here and kind of expand upon it and take it further. But this should give you enough to kind of build a prototype application where you can create a user and manage user accounts, etc. You'll see also that there was a button I put here called Forgot Password. Password does offer a, a password recovery system as well. All of that's in the documentation. All of that is, is explained on their websites and how to do that. It's also very straightforward. You just call the forgot password method on the email address and the emails the person to reset the password, etc. Pretty straightforward and just as simple as signing in and logging into a user. So I'll let you go and investigate that a little bit more. But thank you again for watching. I hope these videos proved helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, please shoot a comment down below. It would be awesome if you could subscribe. It tells me that you want to see more of these videos. I'm currently working in positive at the moment, so I'm wanting to make videos as I'm learning the application too because it's the documentation's not that great, and so I kind of want to share the knowledge I'm learning. And you guys are subscribing or commenting. Uh, at least I know that's you know it's 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 for a good cause, but I'll probably do them anyways, um, just in case. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.